Welcome back to Station Ears, and you can see I've removed the battery from over here from my heating system. Uh, we're going to improve things a little bit here. I ran a, that extra bus of large... Well, no, I really must have replaced this floor. <laughs> the extra bus of uh, power cable from our main battery center, center over there. I then moved the battery over here. So all this now is heavy cable. I've got a generator here, and I can probably remove that power control now. Uh, I don't think it needs to be there anymore, so we can always just run it round, or I can move this cable at one and then have a nice neat cable. I'll need that, but I've, I've actually removed all the rest of the cable from these blocks. So this now makes sure that that is all on low power. Then the rest of this cable coil goes underneath here to this generator, where it splits off, and then <clears throat> we have low power going that way up to 4,500 watts, yes. And we also have high power going off this way. So the split is before that generator. High power going this way to our heating system, which is the only thing that really uses uh, power that high. So why don't we just complete this last bit of flooring and then we should be good to uh, just rework this a little bit. So let's just put you in place. I may need to put more, more flooring in, but for now, I'm just content to have something to walk on back here. That will do. And yeah, let's just dump this around here for now. There we go. So we've got a generator here that we can reuse, I think, because this is was previously coming from our battery. So let's just grab you. And then we can do this wherever we want, really. But there is some power cable here, and that leads into the heaters, I think. I want to say heaters. Um, I did get people saying that the heaters can't survive a certain, sorry, not the heaters, the ca this cable can't survive a certain level of heat. I'm not heating this thing up very hot, so I don't have the problem. But if you do, make sure to maybe just have everything on that high, uh, high strength, high, high wattage or voltage cable so that it will survive, uh, <laughs> it will survive in really high temperatures. We will, however, come on to a point where we're going to have to use that for something else entirely, but a uh, similar kind of method. So from here, uh, we can just, just rotate this around. Okay, and from anything that here on in, uh, we can have up to, again, up to 5,000 watts, just fine. Uh, that won't cause the small cables to blow. Let's just set it to 4,800. We can turn that on. You should have power. Uh, we'll see once it's connected up to everything else. And what else do I want here? I want to just remove this cable. It's a piece of cabling. There we go. Let's just actually get rid of all this as well. We don't need you or you, you, or you anymore. But we can just put down straight pieces, I think, and that should be fine. Now, notice what I've also done is I've also turned off that. Because this, uh, if you saw it there, it's 100%, <laughs> will not be 100% for very long. This is what I wanted to talk about with how we do gas filtering. Because the filters don't last, or they are infinite now, they are consumable, when we pull in from the atmosphere, which is, again, free, as we've previously said... Uh, do I have anything in this tank at the moment? Let's see what I've got in the tank. Uh, helps if I can see. So, 6,000 moles is in that tank. Plenty in there, but uh, that will rapidly get used up by the filter. And I think the filter is more for the number of hours it's used not necessarily how much gas is put through it, I think. And if that's the case, we need to change the way we do gas filtering. So instead, I would use these these same units, these filtering units, um, but without any filters in them. And then we basically create a massive tank, just like this one, that is um, that is unsorted gases. And then when we want to sort them, we will put them through a second one of these, but that will be running at the maximum rate that it can. Remember just how fast these things are. They can transfer an awful lot. The The atmosphere is not very dense at all. So if we try to run them now, I don't think it will do a very good job. It takes quite a while to build up 
pressure inside one of these tanks. So I think what I'd like to try is maybe a second buffer in that we'll feed that to the first buffer here that's just mixed gases from the atmosphere. Remember that's got O2 in it. If it didn't have O2, we could use it for all other things because there's only there's O2, there's nitrogen, there's pollutant, and there is carbon dioxide. O2 is volatile with, uh, well, volatiles. So we'll have an unsorted tank and then probably that a second unit in between the two tanks that we turn on whenever we need to refill our second tank, which is, you know, possibly a cold tank. Now this, that's the other thing to check actually. Now that we've got temperature curves, what's this tank at? It's still at minus 27. So um, because the day is obviously, there's half night where it's down at minus 60, minus 70, and at daytime it rises to 20, it's sort of evening out at minus 30. That's still fine for me because that's still useful as a, a cooling tank for the rest of uh, everything in there. So, you know, I don't have any problems with that. If you're in a world that it is very hot, maybe you might have issues on the moon, for instance, where I've not checked, but I imagine daytime will be actually much higher than 20 degrees C. Uh, but you have vacuum outside, so... Temperature is a little bit weird under those circumstances. I don't, uh, I don't, I haven't looked at back at it recently. In any case, let's get the rest of this up. Uh, that just means now I just need to connect to, um, oops, this thing. Still not great. I cope with it on the beta branch just because there's lots of new stuff on the beta branch. But if I was doing anything else, I might be tempted to wait on the, uh, on the normal branch. Let's just get this done. So. Straight to cable, straight over to here. And then we'll just detach here and then just run a uh, junction. There it goes. I just heard everything turn on. I hope you did as well. Very quiet, but this is now on. And uh, I probably should need the network analyzer. I need to cover that up. Uh, there we go. So this being in that room that is um, just sort of sealed off, even though that's not been on for a while, that temperature is going up quite rapidly now because it's got lots of power available to it, I assume. Yep. Yeah. Um, but because of that, um, well, sorry, no, in spite of that, the temperature is still at 45 degrees, even though this hasn't been on for quite maybe 10 in-game hours. So, yeah, do be aware of that. This is the temperature of the room, of course, not necessarily the temperature of the tank, but we can test what the temperature of the tank is. Um, let's see, because you still do get heating losses through pipes, but that's 45, 44 degrees as well. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty good. That should then drag this up until that, that uh, temperature that we set it to. Is it about 90, something like that? And so that heating system is now sort of fixed, apart from the fact... Well, I've turned this this heat this hot regulator on, uh, off. Sorry. Uh, apart from the fact that this pollutant filter is pretty much dead. So first of all, just because uh, I want to ensure that everything is nice, I want to make another pollutant filter. <laughs> and this 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 list is awful. It couldn't say nitrogen filter heavy nitrogen filter. You know, instead, no, it's not alphabetical, but it is just not with the leading letter. It's like, uh, okay, okay, guys, <laughs> please, we need to improve that drop down system. Just a major rework so that everything inherits from it. It would be just great that, uh, you know, that a search would be standardized across all of them. That would be cool. So, um, let's build one of those. We're going to need some more. Are we going to need some more iron? Is it iron? Design and did I put that in my backpack? Where did I put the iron? Was it over here? Yeah, at least some of it is over here. 80. That'll do. And we can keep it going for about four hours because it's two hours per filter. We can just put two filters in there. Let's just uh, make sure that is selected and then we'll swap these out. I will actually actually have to make a recycling uh, setup at some point. There we go. That is now working again. And let's take a quick check at what everything's got to, because now, remember, we've got the temperature curves to worry about. 
and um, I think it's still okay in there. I don't think there's much of a problem, but let's just quickly check. No, there isn't much of a problem. Uh, they have this pipe network which is connected to these radiators, so this would reflect whatever the temperature is inside, roughly speaking. And uh, that's perfectly fine. We've got um, we've got half a megapascal. Uh, what, I did get another comment from someone saying, by the way, uh, I should try and pressurize this up to many pascals, uh, sort of 50 megapascals, I think, of, um, of pollutant. It may be a, a better heat transfer at that point. I've not had a problem with the heat transfer as such, um, that being, uh, you know, th the speed of the heating following the radiators and that kind of thing. I've not had too much of an issue with it, but if you do, then maybe you want to do that. Uh, let's just put this floor back in, so, so that I don't get too much of a problem there. And there we go. So I'm going to leave this open for now. Um, I've got a, a few other plans for that. So this should be rising rapidly. Yep, we're up to 77 degrees. Let's see what it's doing to our batteries, though, because that's now a major power draw on our batteries. Eh, it's still okay. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the night time, but it's not a major drain on the batteries. I think we should pretty well. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. I did reduce the number of heaters in that room to two. It was six originally, which would take like six kilowatts which wouldn't <laughs> i couldn't even do it with this i'd have to have uh, heavy cable everywhere but uh, that's fine uh that will work okay and let's, let's look at this other these other networks what have we got in here that's all fine co2 has been taken out are we still discarding that or is that going i think that's going back into the hot tank did i did i send that back into the hot tank it looks like it because the pipe's going down there Oh my god, I have to go underneath again. I'm sinking. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I need to go underneath. Let's just take a look. Let's grab that. I think that pipe just kind of reconnects. Yeah, it does. It's just going to reconnect to the hot side uh, before the... Um... Oh, this jetpack's terrible. Um, to the hot side just before it gets to the hot regulator. So that is effectively connected to the tank. There's no real problem there, so that's working fine. And I have to go and retrieve that flooring piece from down there. <laughs> Can you tell how much I hate that jetpack? Just that it causes you to fly off uh, whenever you use it. I don't, I don't really need that at all. Okay, so that's fixed, back up and running. We don't have any power problems when it's on. Uh, we will have to maybe build more. Uh, solar panels, you'll see that battery is now drained before it's never drained at night time. That's perfectly fine though if the daytime will recharge this enough. Uh, I think it will, but we'll see. And uh, it's easy to build extra solar panels for that kind of thing. Okay, so now has our furnace regenerated? Uh, what are we at? It is. It's ready, so let's give this a try. I think it's ready. Yeah, it looks it. Okay, so let's put the iron ingot in now remember that oh and now i just can't jump up enough to actually put stuff in mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so there goes the iron ingot remember that the ingots won't give off any gas so it should be fine in there yes requires at least 373k to melt ingot iron fine let's see what happens when we put the coal in there. the coal i imagine will emit gases but <laughs> come on now now i'm going to use it Okay, is it still feeding that in? Is that why that port hasn't opened up yet? Okay. Yeah, it's processing. Why are you processing? There's nothing to process. I've... That's interesting. Because if it was ore, I assume it would just show up as, uh, as the bottom. Now maybe we actually need to turn the furnace on before putting stuff in. All right, let's give that a go. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. It just doesn't open up the top. It's been a while since I did alloys, clearly. Uh, are you going to open again? <laughs> Sometime soon? There you go. And I assume that means the temperature's dropping. 
Yeah, there we go. So we've got 150 grams of iron, 50 grams of hydrocarbon, but nothing saying that it will produce steel. Uh, its temperature has dropped just by putting it in there, and you can't just put them in before you start it off. So maybe that's the close a loophole or a bug. So I think we're going to have to change the code for that somehow. Uh, either we'll have to up the initial pressure that we give it, or, well, I think, I think that's exactly what we're going to have to do. Uh, and that's going to become a problem now. How am I going to get steel out without pulling this handle and getting just reagent, you know, just slag out of the bottom, essentially? Uh, I think I'm going to have to feed it with stuff, I would have thought. Hmm, let me go and have a look. So the simplest thing you, well, you should be able to do, uh, if you need to rescue the furnace like this, if you got it into this state, is just to cycle again. The stuff we've done should cycle it back to the start again, and it's already been processed, I assume, at that point? Um, yeah, the top's open, so it's already been processed. So we can do that, but the other design of this furnace makes it fairly simple in that if it just takes up extra heat to process the things now, it's no problem. Just increase this furnace regulator. Just change that. There's no need to put any changes on the code on the computer, uh, just that one regulator, and that will work just fine, I think. I don't think we have to make any more changes. Yeah. Input analyzer, is it already cycled? Um, still dropping. Why is that still saying oxygen and volatiles? When clearly the furnace is not just oxygen and volatiles. Just the input. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. It's uh, there we go. That's the contents of the furnace. There is no backflow still. Uh, and did get a comment saying, "Yep, yeah, unfortunately, this output it does have a backflow from the rest of the network." You'll see here. The furnace has the same, pretty much the same contents as the pipe network. So do be a bit careful with this. Oh, and the other thing that I got told as well, um, be careful with this. I don't know quite how we can solve this one, actually. This is a bit of a quandary. Um, we're going to want to, well, probably the only thing, the only way to solve it is to make sure this is hot all the time. If you put stuff in chutes and it's backed up, so we have a buffer going down there, if that's then too warm, um, things can melt in the chutes, which is why we might not get the full contents out of this thing. If that happens, that's not great. Um, but I still don't see a way of solving it completely, because even if we put this furnace in a hot room or something like that, as soon as stuff is going to come along, it's going to hit the hot room before it actually enters the furnace. I guess it's going to be quick, but at the same time, you know, if, it, if we put in, I don't know, six stacks of ore, when the first one hits the hot furnace, it still takes time to actually process and get sent into the rest of our system. Uh, so at that time, there will be like five more, and then it'll wait for one stack, and then four more, etc. So I'm not sure if that's completely solvable. The only solution I can think of is either just to ignore the problem and assume you're going to get some losses, or put it in a, well, a hot room. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, we can just enclose, and this is the other comment I got, we can enclose the back half of this furnace right along this line right here in the hot room. And then the front half doesn't uh, have any issue with being out here in the atmosphere. So you can still access this front half to see what's in this thing, um, but still have everything self-contained. So that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, have you finished decompressing yet? So let's just, uh, let me cut forward until that's been done. Okay, here we are at the furnace, so we are back up to ready to be activating this. Let's activate it. And yep, so that is a cheap way of getting rid of the uh, the problem. It's just very slow, isn't it? We don't have to have to charge it up twice just to process things. And that sort of leads us on to talking about a hot CO2 furnace or a hot gas furnace, in that we, as long as we can heat things up adequately and keep them hot, we can use a reserve tank to uh, do our alloys whenever we want. We don't even have to worry about uh, the combustion because it's just not going to happen. Um, we can just have an input hot pipe and open it, pressurize it to whatever we want, and then um, input our materials, presumably. We'll have to 
give that a try anyway but i've got 200 more steel for now so yeah if you were having problems with the the steel just recharge it just push the button again if you've been following along speaking about and you'll see i've been putting some stuff down here speaking about a better furnace uh the common solution that we've done so far and it is a bit crazy that we, we use this kind of solution that, but we create a one block room or two block room with radiators and heaters in it to act as a, a way of uh, essentially heating up a large tank because that's the, the the most power efficient way to do so now if we're not concerned with power efficiency and we could still do it that way that's not a problem if we're not concerned with power efficiency and i am because my batteries are going down but just as a sort of example kind of thing if i put in lots more solar panels and lots more batteries what could we do with air conditioners now i haven't touched them until now let me just turn these things on i'm going to need to go and make a little bit more heavy cable coil because we don't have quite enough but uh that's oh is it all in the top it's probably all in the top just grab the copper and the gold and i'm not going to need much of this so let's just see heavy cable coil yeah it's half a gold per coil so this would have enough for 80 we're not going to need 80 we're going to need uh four extra maybe eight extra something like that let's just leave that alone for a little while so we can do two things with these as you might imagine well uh, most air conditioners you normally set them to cool things down right well these also can be set to heat things up they're quite flexible so they're an air conditioner and a heater let's just grab all of you turn you off for a second put you away and then we'll just grab uh well i've got to be careful about doing this because it will cut off power to the base when i do <laughs> so let's just wait for one more there we go let's clear that and then we can just power these up and i'll show you what i mean okay now they're all hooked up and on so i've got a passive vent on the input and a passive vent on the output of this thing so technically what we can do here is well, there's nothing in this pipe really at the moment so we do have to maybe hook that up temporarily i guess to something that has something in it um we'll come back to that in a minute um but whatever the input is this thing is going to take it to 20 degrees now if we set this down to like minus 99 it's going to try and cool it and output it and it will cost six kilowatts by doing it don't well you know something like that we'll see how much it costs in a minute but uh yeah it's definitely really still reducing we definitely still need more solar panels for our heater setup so why don't while i'm playing with this i think i'll just turn off the heaters um because it takes an awful lot to get that large tank up to temperature oh yeah, let's turn you off good okay so we've got an air conditioner now that's bringing the input gas down to minus 99 and it will then add heat to this this pipe we can also set these air conditioners up to heat things up to 99 but what i'm actually wondering is can we can set, can, can we create essentially a a loop that continues to heat something so if this is set to 99 it should output a 99 degree gas here or it'll try to but I'm just wondering if we can use that to drive the input somehow. And that would be interesting to see if we could do it. Um, this may be worth trying a few different approaches. And in fact, we may, we may not even need a second one of these things. If I set this to minus 99, it's going to try and chill the gas on the output. And the waste we get is just continually pumped into this, this one pipe. Uh, there's no filters going on we're not actually you know selecting the gas but it is driving the temperature up quite high of course when we let it expand into a much larger volume that's going to drop but uh, that's an interesting that's an interesting thought can we continue to drive it high enough with this that this is a much simpler version of our heating room probably as long as we're willing to get um <laughs> as long as we're willing to pay the cost in power uh, so let's actually see if we can do let's just uh, let, me, let me go and get that and let me just verify this is still six kilowatts so uh, that's a hash display or scanner tracker is, is it in my backpack maybe 
it is in my backpack. Okay, let's just swap these over. And let's turn it on. And let's take a look at the network. So um, let's just scroll down. Can I actually see? Ah, there we are. So air conditioner on is 2.7 kilowatts. Okay, so that's like th two, well, that's like two of those heaters. Uh, well, three of those heaters, I guess. So it will be draining that setup. And uh, I also have to make sure that I uh, just swap these back for a second. Uh, where did I put the other cartridge? Where's the other cartridge gone? Ah, did I put it in here? Wow. No? Uh, did I drop it somewhere? Ugh, of course I dropped it somewhere. There we go. All right, and we want to make sure this doesn't continue to... Oh, no, wait, hang on, it's stabilized. That's because the output stabilized, maybe? Let's just put this in the backpack. Or somewhere. I will drop it and remember that it's there this time. And let's just let that exhaust go. So at that goes, and it's obviously super chilled. Will this continue to increase, or will this stay steady state? Looks like it's staying around the same value. It's got to a certain pressure, and it's not going anywhere. So I guess we could take that, <laughs> and uh, we could just feed it straight into the next machine. Not sure this is going to be recommended, but... <laughs> you know, you've got to try these things, haven't you? There we go. Um, let's see. Okay. So you are dropping now, because obviously it's a larger volume for it to fill. And let me just change the battery over. There we go. And let's switch you on. And let's see what that does to your output. So that is at 97 at the moment. This is sort of varying. It's dropping in temperature, though. Yeah, this is chilling. So with both of these going, is there any way to combine both of these, or at least one of these, to really superheat something? I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to leave it open for you guys to discuss, because people tend to have lots of nice arguments in the comments before I get to an episode on building something like this. Should we build it using these? Or should we go back to our heated room approach? Both are valid. I imagine both will work in some way. Uh, we may need other equipment here, for example, just to uh, get rid of the heated gas so that um, new, new chilled gas goes in and the, uh, the air conditioners continue to heat it. Fair enough. But we will need some way of going above what these are set to, if we can. And it'd be nice if we can do that without a weird room setup. So I'll leave that open for everyone to comment and argue about. And we'll pick it up next time with the build for the, uh, the new furnace. So remember the objectives here are to get this furnace to be much, much faster at doing things, which probably means a hot gas tank of some kind. Um, we don't have to push this button. Ideally, we don't want, really want a computer at some point. Eh, it's a short, good shortcut for some, some cases. But having a furnace here that we can just process stuff through, brilliant idea, I think. And that should be the next thing, because we've already got this going. Uh, and if I haven't mentioned before, there is now a pressure plate you can set. So if I wanted to I could put a pressure plate here and then use that to activate these, instead of flip, flipping this on and off, you just step onto this when you're going here anyway. And you can uh, you can put stuff in your your shoot network. Other than that, I think that's okay for this episode. There's a lot about just rambling in this episode. I know it's not uh, not a typical kind of episode. We will resume a uh, set build next episode, and that will be the furnace. But I just wanted to get lots of updates done so people don't have a you know have questions about what I've done with certain things, especially not this system. So this system will work continue to work as normal until we figure out what we're going to do with gas filters. I may have to change this system over to not do this kind of approach now because 
of just the way that uh, filters are consumable. But again, if you want to have uh, some comments about changes to this to deal with consumable filters, again, remember we can um, create tanks to have large reserve buffers so that these filters are not on all the time. So that's probably the best kind of approach, if we can do it, to, to this kind of system. Uh, however, we'll see. I'm not quite so sure just yet. All right, so feel free to like, subscribe, subscribe and share if you've liked the episode. I realize obviously it's not been a buildy episode, so I do apologize for that. But occasionally I have to have a, a miscellaneous episode dealing with lots of just stuff that's been catching up. And are they still on? They are still on. They consume power even when they're not doing anything, so I'm just going to turn those off. <laughs> and uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for some more Stationeers.